Hello Excel users, this is a follow-up video from the previous YouTube video where I showed you a demo of my dynamic list box that can load different data sets of different sizes, so different number of rows, different number of columns for any active worksheet you select. Also totally dynamic in terms of it just the list box column lists as per the underlying worksheet column lists. So next I'm going to discuss and I'm going to show you how to create the list box user form and also the VBA coding behind it. So here's the original data set on which we want to create the dynamic uh, list box user form. So um, it's saved in LSXM format. And the next thing you need to do is uh, go to the developer tab and then click on Visual Basic. And then in this workbook, you need to right click, insert user form, expand user form so it's larger. And you can leave the user form uh, code name, a uh, user form one as it is. Change the caption to something more meaningful. Called, in this case, dynamic data grid this box. Next thing we need to do is from the toolbox, add the frame first. Then the frame is this object here. Click on the frame and then just drop it within the blank canvas. But we need space for uh, labels uh, for the row count and the column count and the button for the refresh form at the bottom but leave space at the bottom here so click back onto the frame frame one and delete the caption frame one you can leave the name as it is next from the toolbox we need to add the actual list box which is this item here and click it uh, place it within the list box uh, sorry within the the frame so you can leave a board as well like this We have to resize the this box within the, the frame. Now, next we need to do is um, call the list box something more meaningful. So I'm going to call it list data grid. And this will be the code name. So click on any space between the frame and the list box and then change the back color to something uh, other than grey, so let's choose light green so you can see a border uh, around the list box uh, it gives you the effect so next thing we need to do now is we need to add uh, a label so go back into the toolbox click on the label button here and place it here and for the label um, which is the first label this is the label that's going to hold the, the data set row count for the use rows. So click back onto the label. The code name is going to be label data rows count. You can leave the label one and the caption as it is. And for the label itself, uh, change the, the font in terms of the bold font size and the the font, font style, sorry, on the sides as bold and 10. Expand the label a bit more. Copy the label. Um, paste it onto the user form again. Underneath the list box alongside the other label. And this time, this label is going to be holding the, uh, the column count of the data set on which the list box is. Um, based on so click on here again on the label one which is the second label and then change the code name to label data rows count last thing we need to do is we need to add a command button here and all this will do is refresh the form so you can leave the command button default name command button one as it is but change the caption to something more meaningful so you know what it does, refresh form so this button will refresh the form for each of the worksheet that you select and put that into form font size 10 So now that the dynamic data grid list box has been created, we need to create the VBA coding 
to make it work. So first thing we need to do is go back into this workbook and then right click and then this time you need to insert a standard module. You'll see a module folder appearing and the default name for the module is module 1. You change that to something more meaningful. Okay, so I've called it uh, dynamic form this box. I'm pasting the code for the, the VBA for the list box and I want to go through each section. So the first thing is step one, which is to declare the variables. This variable is used to determine the last row of the current data set. This one, the last column of the current data set. This one, string column, that's used to get the last column header letter of the current data set to assign to the row source list box property, which I'll show you later. Um, column width, that's used to populate the column width of the dynamic list box in one assignment. And the last variable, column, call, is uh, used as a looping variable. So for step two, we assign the, the last row, used data row of the data set, current data set, in the last row variable. That's done by using this code here. So application count, application rows account is the maximum number of rows uh, for the current data set uh, for Excel allows, which is a million from Excel 2007 onwards. And what it does is goes to the very end of the maximum number of rows and then works backwards until it finds the last used data row and then returns a row. Similarly, um, the column last column does the same thing, but this time it it works at the looks at the very last column at the first row and then works uh, moves it to the left and to the last uh, used data column and then returns the row uh, sorry, the column. Next section is to for as we saw that the user form the list box called the code name was list data grid. We need to activate column heads through and then the column count is going to be um, the last column which we worked out in step two. So next we need to assign the dimensions of the current worksheet in view to the row source property of the list box, uh, the dynamic list box of the user form. So if we go back into the user form and the list box is selected. If you scroll down to the near the bottom of the properties window of the list box, you will see a uh, an entry for the row source and this is the property that we need to enter the address of the, the data set and uh, for the underlying worksheet data set which we then use and what Excel does is um, it puts the the contents of the underlying worksheet for the dimension of the row source into the list box. So we'll go back into the VBA coding or the module. The thing is um, with the row source property, it has to be a string. You can't assign it just using the range object. And it has to be like this. So, for example, here the user form one, then we call the name of the list box as data grid, the row source property, and you assign, uh, for example, a, uh, a fixed um, address, data set as A2 and K50. Now, we don't want it like that. I mean, we need it to, to be dynamic, so we don't want it to be fixed in terms of A250. A to K50. So uh, the first part of the uh, the roster property of the dynamic list box will start from A2. We start from A2. When we do that, then what Excel automatically does is um, it looks at the row header and automatically assigns the row header of the data sheet as the column headers of the list box. So that's fine for A2 as the first part of the row source property. Second part, K50, um, the 50 part, for example, uh, the 50 is the last row of the data set. That can be handled by the, the long last row variable. But the K part, which is the column letter, that can't be handled by anything. It can't be handled by the, um, the uh, integer last column because that's a number, not a letter. So what we do is we use the VBA split function and here's the syntax. So string column and then we use split function and then the active sheet dot cells 
and then you've got two integer column and then the address. The reason why we're using the second row is uh, because um, that will be the row in which we want the, the data set start from for the list box. So the best way of extracting the, the column letter and the row number of a cell, an active cell, is to use a split function. So here we've got the split function here and we specify the first argument as the address of the active cell and then you've got a delimiter. So here's an example of an address. It'll, when you specify the address property of a cell, it's always in this format, so you, in absolute reference format. So you'll have dollars. So we specify the dollar as the, the delimiter, and then what the split function does is splits uh, this address into two components, where the indexing starts from one, not zero. So the first element will be a, b, and the second element will be 2,500. Right, to give an example of that, if I go into the uh, underlying worksheet and we've got the uh, the very last used cell being selected, in this case it's uh, it's uh, K52594 and, and that's going to be the active cell and then we'll see how uh, the split function uh, extracts the, the letter and the row number from this active cell. Go back into EBA and then open up the immediate window and here we specify the first argument as the active cell address the delimit is dollar and we want to extract the first element which is uh, which is the first element of the active cell and that's a which is correct the second one should be the row number and that's 52,594 which is correct again so this is the best way of extracting the the letter on and also the row number of a active cell and then we can use this um, as a way of um, creating a string and assigning it to the row property of the list box. So as we just need the first element of the split function, uh, the letter, we assign the uh, variable string column uh, with this function like this. So the address of the uh, the last column of the data set, and then we specify the, the limit as dollar. We extract the last, uh, sorry, we extract the first element of the of the array in the split function. And then what we do next is we <coughs> assign, sorry, the row source of the list box. In this case, we called it list data grid of user form. And then we specify it like this. So you've got A2, which is always going to be the same for all the row sources because uh, we assume that all the sets start from. Uh, cell A2 and the string column will be the last column of the of the user range and the last row in terms of number will be handled by um, the long last row variable. So the next thing is we need to assign the column widths um, of the underlying data set at uh, the multiple column widths into the column widths property of the list box. If I go into the user form and list box and if you scroll down uh, near the top actually of the properties of the list box you will see um, a heading for column widths here so here you can uh, enter multiple widths for multiple columns in the list box and it will be represented in the list box so if I go back into the, the module this is handled by uh, using the string column widths uh, variable which is that as nothing, which is going to be string variable. And then what we need to do is we need to create a loop and, and the looping variables column. And we're going to loop from the first column to the very last column. And we know that the last column is handled by this variable, integer last column. So the next part of the code is handled by an if statement. So if the column, uh, current column of the looping variable isn't the last uh, column which is this uh, variable here then we add the the width of the column of the current looping column and then we append that to uh, uh, the uh, comma because the string variable for column width is going to have uh, individual column widths for the columns and separated by a comma which is the format you'll be needing when you assign that string to the column widths property of the list box but if we come to the very last column, 
and that's where the loop repair column is equal to the last column then we want it to do exactly the same as it done before uh, at the column width of that uh, last column but don't um, add a comma because it's the very last uh, part of the column width um, and then the next step is then simply to assign the column width property to this box to the column width uh, variable and then next uh, what we need to do is, is quite simple really is the the two labels which are added just the captions we're going to add the um the word data set rows and then append it to uh, the long last row and then tick off one to exclude the worksheet header row and similarly for the uh, columns uh, number of columns um, data set columns the next step what we need to do is so the next step is to load the load populate form list box routine into the user form initialize event for the form so you do that by if you're going to use the form one and then right click and select view code and i'm pasting the code here but to get it manually what you need to do is there's two drop downs the first drop down is you may select the object in this case it's the entire user form and then the second drop down is which event you want the code uh, to fire under in this case you want the initialize event of the form and then within the code all you need to do is uh, call the uh, the subroutine called load populate form this box so what this does is not only load the form but does all the programming in terms of populating the list box and um, populating the captions of the label so if i test that you can now see the list box appearing and it's all dynamic in terms of the number of data set rows and data set columns uh, for the underlying data set what it doesn't do at the moment is um, it doesn't refresh the form yet because we've not programmed it yet. The other thing is uh, it's only locked to this worksheet, sales data one. We can't connect to sales data two or sales data three. So that will be discussed next. So if I close this form and then for the form, click on the form. And then if you go down the properties of user form one and there's a property called show model, the default setting for that is true, change that to false. So what that does is whenever you open up the user form, fire up, load it up, you can now also select the worksheet with the user form um, at the top still showing. Now if I select you sales 82, the form is still showing. So the next step then will be when you click, uh, click on the refresh form, you'll refresh the form depending upon which uh, data set is being um, displayed in the worksheet behind it. That's the next step. So if I just close this, go into sales data one, go back into visual basic, go back into the module. For step 10 then we insert a simple routine in this module to show the user form using this code. So what this is, is the user form is uh, unloaded first and then shown again, uh, reloaded. And that will be used for the refresh form button. So the subroutine is called show form and it's in this module. So next we go into the user form uh, object. And then we uh, first uh, click on the refresh form button. And then all we need to do is just call that uh, subroutine we call show form. Go back into the form and press the play button. So here we've got the dynamic user form and it's totally dynamic as I said before. Uh, in this case we've got 474 rows and 26 columns. And it can also handle more than 26 columns but when I showed you the split function it can handle any number of columns for any data set. So it can also exceed 26. But in this case, the maximum I've got is 26. If we select another sheet, say sales data 3, refresh the form, we've now got the, the new data set, sales data 3, um, loaded and reflected in the uh, list box. And you can see the data set rows 21 and columns 5. So we're going to another data set, sales data 2, refresh the form. Again, it's totally dynamic. All the column widths have been adjusted to the column widths of the underlying data set, as you can see there, it's, it's quite matching. 
also total dynamic dynamic rows, dynamic column number, and it's refresh. And you can also um, select the underlying data set while viewing the the data set in the uh, list box of user form. The final thing we need to do is we need to be able to uh, launch the macro uh, show form via the macros um, button using the keyboard shortcut. So if you go into macros and the developer and click on show form and then click on options and then we can choose a shortcut key to launch the, uh, the, the show form macro that opens the user form in this box uh, simply by pressing a key. So we say select the S. And then what Excel does is uh, adds the necessary uh, extra uh, keystrokes, um, which you need to press with the letter that you've chosen to launch the, the macro. Click on OK and click on Cancel. And let's test that. Um, so we used a combination of Control Shift S. And there you go, it's been launched via the keyboard. Let's select another row. Uh, sorry, we just close that, refresh the form. We select, say, sales data 4, sales data 5, sorry. And let's uh, launch the user form again using that shortcut key. It's launched. So everything's working. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.